What's up guys, this is Trevor from Kremen again. Today I'm here with Mike. We've been receiving some comments of people wanting to know more detail about how to do things. So today, Mike's gonna show you how to calibrate your spindle probe and your tool probe inside your Haas machine. Check this out. All right, Mike, let's show them how to do this. All right, so the first things first, when you before you even wanna calibrate anything, you need to make sure that the probe is true with your indicator. So you got an indicator with a mag bay set up, yep. and touching on the ruby of your probe. Yep, I always set it up. There's four screws to adjust it. I always set it up on one so you know what it is to the other side. And then you can just spin it to see how far you're off. So right now you can see that that, that probe is off. So you're about five thou off there. So you have these set screws and all you have to do is figure out which way you need to go. So right now, we need to come towards us. So this screw has to be loose. You just slightly back it off and then just flip slightly to the back, it off. And back then, screw and tighten it up. Yep. And you'll see the indicator move as you bring it in. So there we moved it about two and a half out. Now we can re-spin and you can see Wow, you about nailed that on the first try. She's pretty much right there. Now you have to make sure you retighten that screw, so go back in and you don't want to reef it, you just barely touch it. Now ideally, how close do you want that? I'd say within five tenths. The closer it is, the better it is because you're gonna be picking up all your workstations. If you're off a little bit, obviously if your setup's bad, your parts are gonna be bad. And that's all you have to do with that part of it. Now you can actually go into calibrating it. So you pull your indicator away. So now you have your calibration ring. So in our case, we like to have a calibration ring ideally glued in or permanently set in here. In ideally. some cases you can't. And this is just like a master size where you know exactly what size that ring is. Right. Most rings are one inch. That's your master ring. All your production ones, they stay in. This one gets tore down every now and again, so we keep it out. First thing you gotta do is bring your ruby down inside of that as close to center as possible. And you want to be underneath the top. So now it'll be under that surface. You don't have to be perfectly in the center, but somewhere in the center. So to calibrate with the ring, you want to go to your MDI and you'll see the screens over here. And then it'll tell you right here, press program conversation to activate the BQC and IPS tab. We want it's a drop down into here. So now you have options to do all of your tool setting or workstations. In this case, we want to do probe calibration, so that's where I brought it down to. Hit enter. And then it'll tell you as you go across, calibrate OTS, which is the tool probe. This is the height of the spindle probe, which it'll tell you probe Z, spindle probe Z, and then Spindle probe, X, Y, calibrate. Highlight, enter. And then it'll ask you, it's all very conversational and ask you what you want to do. So it's asking you for the diameter of the ring, which most standards are one inch, which ours is. And it loads the file, put it into MDI, and it'll load it right in for you. Go back to MDI, now you're there. Once you hit go, this will light up with the Renshaw eye over there and it'll start to probe to do its calibration. Mike, how often should people be calibrating their uh, spindle probe and their tool probe? In this situation on this machine and normal machines, once a week. But if you're using it through a program, I would say once a day. Once would, a day? Once a day at least calibrating it, checking it to make sure the runout's there at least every week. So a lot of it comes down to how often are you using it. Right. You're using this a lot, you want to do this more frequently. Yep. And that's it. She's ready to go. Now she's ready to go. All right, so now we're going to do our tool probe. And this is for actually setting the heights of all your tools. So this, we just check to make sure it's flat occasionally, probably, we'll say every month as your monthly you maintenance. You say make sure the tool pose is nice it's and straight. flat and yep. straight. So when your tools come down, sometimes they spin, Sometimes they just beep it. If you're using it as a spinning, 
you want to get every flute, and that's where you want this to be perfect. So all we'll do is we'll just run the indicator over it, and you can see that it's not moving much. Yeah, look, it's nice and flat right now. Yep. Yep. So we're good on that. So during your weekly, when you're doing your weekly calibration, you're not bringing this indicator in and not, setting it up. Not you're, every week. you're just going to bring in a, your calibration Our, tool, right? And calibrate the post. Not everybody has one of these. This one came with our other machine, but you can see on there, it'll give you the actual length, which is from this surface to here, and then your diameter. And that's all important to when you're actually calibrating the post. So this will slide in. And if you, if someone didn't have that, you know. If someone didn't have this, they could use an end mill upside down to use the shank because this is all ground. Or you can just get a gauge pin, put it in a holder. Measure your length. You measure your length and then measure your Off diameter. your gauge line and go. Okay. So this is the same as when you brought the spindle probe down into the ring. You want to bring this down over top of that. And make sure it's center or close to center. Now that post, that post you have set up, you just, we're getting it close. It's not like it needs to be a set height above that. It'll tell you when you go to do your probe calibration, I bring it down so you don't have to move everything after you're already into your menu. So go in, program again on your MBI and go down to probe calibration. Now this time you're gonna do the calibrate the OTS, which is what this is called and it even says it on the side. So you can't really screw that up too much. And then enter. And right here is where it tells you your tool length, which is five inches. 3,006 tenths, so 5.0036. And then your tool diameter, 500, so 0.5. Now this is where it asks you to side, which is asking you the side of the table at a time. It, it wants to know where the OTS right. is. So OTS on which side? Left side, minus two, right side, two. So you go minus two. Enter, and then it's loading your file into your MDS. Highlight MBI to put that program in there. And go back, so that's white. Then let it do its thing. Then let it do its thing. So it's actually finding your Z. And it moves in different increments of your thou to your tenths. So you'll have to wait the last time it takes it a long time to come down. And then it'll start to move around. This part of the process you're gonna do Weekly as well. This is weekly also. You can go straight from your spindle probe to your tool probe yep. and your calibration. And that's so if you do get a thousands variance, at least before you go in to actually indicate it once a month or so, if you're off like a thou, which shouldn't gonna hurt much, this will at least make it to when you're setting your tools, they're all current with what it actually is. So do you ever really know that this is out of calibration? You just know that it's just a reassurance thing. It's gonna make the adjustments the in the easiest background. easiest way for us to tell when it's out is if you have a tool in your program being checked while it's running, like a drill or an end mill. Especially a drill because it's using the point. If you set that to 50 thou or 10 thou for what your difference can be, if this is off a couple thou and it comes down, it goes to do it and it alarms because it doesn't think it's the right height. But you look at your drill, your drill's still in good shape. Chances are this is off, not your drill's not broke. That's it. That's it. That is This guy's ready to go. It's ready to go. All right, Mike, so you show us how to do it on the older controller that Haas has. We have both styles. We have the old style controller and we have the next generation controllers. Can you show us how to do this and how it looks different on the next gen versus what we just saw here? Yep, right, take a look. Let's check it out. All right, so just like any other machine out there, when they make a new one, they switch <laughs> just so you guys have to look for everything. Everything on the old one is MBI, everything on the new one is edit. And you'll see the BPS is now up there, which is in MBI over there. Highlight your BPS. Now so you're, you're still looking for VPS, it's just in a different Just in a different, completely different spot, way. yep. So now you're there, all your calibration is down here. So you're gonna highlight any one of those, and it's the same thing over there, except you're not seeing that picture until you get on okay. the actual okay. calibration. This one's a little nicer because you actually see a 3D, basically a model of what you're looking to do. So complete probe calibration, 
tool probe, spindle probe, and then your ring. All you have to do is highlight. So some of these will have an arrow here, which is more of your calibration for the actual programming part. You shouldn't ever have to get into that. That's more of a Haas thing. These you just highlight, enter, and then it goes through and asks you what your lengths, diameters. Looking for all, all the, the same, same information thing. that you had on that one. Yep. Okay. That is the only difference is going into edit instead of NBN. Simple enough. Simple enough. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate yep. it. If you have any comments or questions, throw them on our video. We'll get back to you, I promise. Until next time, see you then.